Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi, Dave. Hello and welcome to This and That. If you are new here, please subscribe below. We are going to be discussing all things figure skating going on in the world as we get ready for Tokyo 21 and Beijing 2022. <laughs> very exciting, Jonathan. And give and us so is your new shirt. So is your new shirt. It's very Thanks. exciting. <laughs> well, I asked had uh, shorts that go with it that I bought and then I was gonna go put them on before. And I was like, where did I put that little package? I don't know. I did an entire deep clean of my apartment uh, the last two, two and a half days because- I find that cleansing. That's the thing. It is, it's a little like, I think like it stirs up a lot of emotions temporarily and anxiety and like nostalgia and awe. And like, I found like, I got rid of papers. Like, <laughs> Stuff. I mean, I really left my apartment uh, in March of like right before the pan, like right when the pandemic was starting and like came back for like here and there, but never like spent any time in it. And I usually clean out in the spring anyway. So there's been, there's been- yeah, You gotta reclaim the space. I totally get that. And now that everything, like I remember when I was doing all these moves, like a while back ago, it was Philly and then New York and then Germany. I was carrying around like all these skating VHS tapes. And I was like, Jonathan, you don't own a VCR. You don't need to be like moving all of these skating VHS tapes. Yesterday and I was wondering, do I get rid of them? Do I not? Yeah. I don't know. Do I need pretty and kind of DVD? Wouldn't I just buy it anyway? I, I'm, I didn't get to the point where I got rid of it yet, but I moved. Okay. It. And then what usually happens for me is now next year when you go and you know that you still have not watched it in that year's time, then you get rid of it. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. got rid of a lot of stuff and I was like, you know, this soda stream that your friend gave you, you've never used it in five years. Oh, you I love it. my soda stream. Okay. <laughs> you might, you, but you use it, right? Yeah, so yeah. By the time that I ever use a soda stream, there could be such a new one that I love so much more. Exactly. So right now, one might say it's in reserve. <laughs> in reserve. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did find this that Chris Schmaltz sent me. And I forgot that I even had it. I think I'm gonna to need to frame it. I think at the time I wasn't in the proper headspace to like really appreciate its magique. But like, you know, the autographed version of our <laughs> national team, Olympic team from the 2018 Olympics, you know, Alexa in there in all of her glory, Mariah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chuck, like our old friends, okay? Yeah, yeah. truly. Uh, Zach, Adam sitting next to hot Chris. Yes, okay. Do you, do you know which Olympic team photo randomly is the most ingrained in my memory though? It's the one from 94, because that one with like Tanya and Nancy facing each other, like that, when I think of Olympic team photos, it's that's the first one that comes to mind. Well, maybe I need one for each of the Olympics and they can be like on a wall. You a know? series, a series, yeah. <laughs> I want, okay, so I'm back here. I was sitting on the couch, but I was just feeling like very like, and I have lower back stuff going on right now. So I know that there's no background and people are gonna be like, Dave, you look like you're in prison. And I know, but <laughs> I think I need new artwork anyway for that wall. But like, can Aliona's husband do like some big giant work for me? Like, what can we commission? Of like, yourself, of yourself oh, at adult oh, nationals no, in the no, new no, outfit. No, no, no. I would love something artsy skating like behind yeah. me something that I'm going to commission. Maybe yeah. I was thinking like Gordy even break off in a death spiral, like something that, you know. Mm. Okay. But he said he would do a commissioned piece if I asked. I said, yeah. Okay. I looked when I was looking to like do some art here. I randomly looked up Toller Cranston stuff because he used to have some funny stuff of skaters. Like, and oh, they were like. I'm in some yeah, I was like, and in general, I just couldn't really get behind the aesthetic. So I let that go. I, I know that Mrs. Bezik has a lot of originals and she passed them down to set. Yeah, but then they're sentimental. Like that has a totally, like I don't have any connection to Tala Cranston. It would just be fun. Do my Sandra voice and you missed it. Oh no, I, I immediately felt calmer. Oh, okay. I just wanted to make sure I, okay. that it was heard. Yeah. <laughs> she doing? I don't know. I saw that she was looking for ice to film some project. So I was. Oh, I feel like she should be able to find it pretty easily, but. No, Canada is still so intense about the pandemic. Oh, okay. Find in vaccines that. Okay. Yeah, I went out to dinner for the first time with my family because everyone's fully vaxxed and 
we went out together and it was a, at a little restaurant that's opening back up. So feels nice, right? Yeah. No, it's people visiting from out of town. So we wanted to get everyone together last night. So it was very nice. It was like, oh, this is what life felt like a little bit. Yeah, more. exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, but no, Adult Nationals to, is fast approaching. I took a, I don't know if I told everyone, I took a full week off of skating from Thursday to through Saturday, through Wednesday. And usually my day off is, I have days off on Friday and Sunday, just based on how, what way I can work with our coaches and get, anyway, my back was really bad. My SI joint mm. was flaring up and it got really compressed. I think my quads were too exhausted and overworked and then it went to the low back. And then, so yes, we're, and someone sent me an SI joint exerciser in addition to what I'm doing in PT. So ready, we're getting ready to go. It was the best thing, or the best thing. I was gonna ask you, so now you've tried on the costume. Yes. Have you been skating in the costume? No. And what What is like a skating plan for that? Because I think one would want to- Oh, I will skate it. But yeah, I would think you'd have to like almost several times to almost break it in, right? Like, or I'm not sure how that would go. You almost get in when I, I will. Okay. Do like my six minute warm up and then do the program when we get close. I'll probably do it like two or three times just to okay. uh, get close. I think in June I'll do that. So, okay. Okay. I'm working back up. So I don't know. I, I was having a really rough couple of weeks of skating where uh, my back was really bothering me and um, I was jumping okay, but it, anything where I had to turn in the low spine, I couldn't do. Like it had just mm. compressed and tightened, and it was like, not it was like that feeling where you want to crack something so bad and it's hurting you, but you can't do it. And it yeah, was, you like can't access the area or something somehow. Yeah. It's really weird. Yeah. yeah, but there were tears. There was frustration. There was yeah, yeah. The, but now it's it's better. And I skated on my own yesterday. And Jonathan, I had my first Nina Petranko lesson on Friday. So I don't want to be calling any girls biblical whores who are skating to skate. I didn't. I called Delilah. Uh, <laughs> I never Listen. said someone Listen. that I am not letting that be the revisionist history on what was said. I said that about the character, not about the skater. Oh my God. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> I just have to say Nina Petrenko is what you would expect. You know, she went to the ballet school, right? So she's like, all right, we're gonna warm up your spirals. Okay, come to the boards. And she makes you do the spiral and she like yanks on that back of free leg to push it higher. Okay. Oh yeah, she's like all the finishing touches of like, you wanna like crack the walnut between your shoulder blades and have your arms out and like, like the finishing details that Igor Lucanin as a heterosexual male may not yell at you about, like she, <laughs> Yeah, he's giving you the foundation and she's taking it that extra step. Okay, okay. And like she is her mother's daughter. Okay, well, you never know if that then that translates or if one like becomes the opposite, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, but this is, okay. <laughs> she had watched our interview with Anna Kantu because she taught Anna Kantu and her sister, right? And the Russian press picked that up like crazy and they took it out of context. And there was like, of course, the Mexican Federation is not used to all this drama and the fact that it was taken out of context. And then you have another woman who wants to be the commentator for Mexican TV making her own video, even though she wasn't at the camp the days that she claimed, oh my God, it's like so much. That's Kayla terrible. Kayla, like situation yeah. over yeah. something that Anna didn't say. She was very realistic about what I got from her about the Terry training was that like, it was an intense discipline and seriousness and attack from every try, every age, very young. And I think that it's just like a seriousness that maybe doesn't happen in the US right away, right? Like mm. it gradually happens and there it is like every single day. And I think the discipline is why well, I think a lot of people in the United States would start a journey as a hobby and then realize that it could materialize into something more. And then at some point it revs up from hobby to full time. And I, it's just sound like they hit the ground running. I also just want to say, if you watch the uh, HBO documentary, Fake Famous, and you're a skater or want to be commentator who has like thousands and thousands of followers, but only a couple of hundred likes on your photos or dozens of likes, I've seen this phenomena on Instagram where like clearly people have bought all these followers and then only like a handful are actually engaged. I've seen it with several skaters, not okay. high, high level, like 
world champion skater, but I do see it in like the Neville Horn Queen kind of. Okay. On the men's and ladies' side. I yeah. Because like I mean, like 50,000 YouTube followers and you're only getting a thousand views on a video. Right. And isn't the goal actually to have the exposure of the video, not a number in the page? Subscriber. Yes. Yeah. I would, I mean, one would think so. Anyway. I lost. <laughs> I see it a lot lately. And it's, it's just. It's transparent. <laughs> it's transparent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yes, the Russians were all about the fact that look, anything about them is going to be completely new, especially exactly. now that they don't have a lot going on. So, and yet they do. And yet they do with these team announcements and some Instagram clips. Let's talk about it. Do you, do let's, you want to? Okay. Let's talk with the, let's start with the men because everyone wants us to talk about the women, but I want to start talking about the men because actually there's a bit of a shakeup going on here. Okay. I was really let's thrilled. Let's, let's, yeah. So Mikhail Kolyada, Alexander Samarin, Makar Ignatov, Andrei Moselev, Evgeny Semenenko, Mark Kondratyuk. And the yeah. reserves are Peter Gumenik, Dmitry Aliyev, and Artur Danilian. Yeah. Let it out, Jonathan. Let out the Well, emotion. here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's not so much about um, Aliyev being in the reserve. He had a very unsuccessful season. That was very clear. And it was very clear that they also are weighing for as many competitions as they have. They had that team thing. They had this challenge and that challenge. But they really were basing a lot, it seemed, on Nationals results. And, of course, um, Daniela and... Or, I'm not saying it right because I'm not looking at it in front of me. Um, and Aliyev were not there. Uh, and that was also one where Peter didn't excel there. And I think that resulted because I enjoy Peter's skating. So it was sad for me also that he was in the reserves. But I was thrilled that Mark was, was on the team because I thought his, especially at that team I'm calling it the team event. You know, the yeah. Alina versus Medvedev thing. Red Machine was, versus uh, Team of First, right? That's right. <laughs> ah, yes, that, that timeless battle. <laughs> but he was sensational there. So I, I was very excited um, that, that he's going to be on the team and hopefully does some good stuff for Russia. Because Semenenko did his job this season. He most certainly did. Uh, however, I could stand to see a different third Russian male on the team. Well, this is all about funding and to the athlete and coaches and I don't, and there are other, also there are other sponsorships. Like this is not the only source of funding. Some of these teams have, obviously, Atari has the uh, Gazprom uh, sponsorship. That's why the G is on there and hmm. she had her big show. So yes, this is important, but this is not the only source of funding for Team Two Breezy. So I think that some of the drama about Alyona Kostrnaya not being on the main team but being a reserve uh, is overblown. So the ladies is Dutanisheva, Sherbakova, Trusova, Valieva, Usashova, Frolich. Reserve team, Lugumanova, Kostrnaya. Now, I do think it's interesting that Frolich is ahead of Kostrnaya because technically Kostrnaya did finish second. At all, yeah. At, uh, the, at the Cup of Russia, mm -hmm. but but the other events, she did not have a great showing this season. And at the end of the season, particularly weak. Plus, she didn't do nationals. But she is looking much better now. So it's hard. And Maya didn't have a great start to the season. But she did finish high enough, did very well at the end of the season. I think it was kind of like a... And we yeah. need... And I think there were some, you know, behind the scenes issues. There was a lot of drama with Kostrnaya over the last season. She wasn't in physical condition. Now she gets back. So, I, look, I she's on the team. She's with the Terry Two Breeze. I don't think it's a huge deal. She just did the show for her. She just brought in a lot of money for Terry, like, and the school. However, and I was thinking, do you notice that Terry is making some moves, like quietly but strategically? Such as? They filed an LLC for Team Two Burritza. They have a YouTube channel that is like, it's growing. Like qu a quiet storm, if you will. Okay. At the TikTok. She has management contracts with all these girls. 
and they're starting to get the sponsorships. And I realized who Terry is really about to become. People keep saying, is she the next Arena Beaner? And I said, that's a great idol. Is she the next Tarasova? No, she's bigger. Jonathan, do you know who Terry is about to become? Who is she about to become? Just think about it. You're going to bomb it. And then you're going to be like, wait. You have to think about there are two sides to this person. One is an opportunistic, right, just tasteful woman. And another is a marketing genius who rises to the occasion and went from the Z list to the A list. And I believe that Terry is about to become the first Kris Jenner of the sports world. Oh, interesting. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Think about it. Except she's I, pushing talent. <laughs> yeah, <but there's laughs> as opposed to Kris Jenner. Think about it as they grow their followings. Yeah. Can Kostanaya sell lip kits, eyeshadow? I mean, the opportunities are really endless. Right now we see them in the sportswear and in the, uh, you know, the, some, the big ones have like Nike or Adidas and that's kind of standard, right? But we started to see like something going on with Costa Maya and guest jeans that people were right. talking about that. There was a toothpaste thing. They do some, uh, also some chic sport, which is like a, you know, that's a within skating kind of um, brand. But you think about what about when they start expanding more, especially with the Olympics coming and these are global celebrities. Right. What if they get into like the makeup space or the hair products or beauty? And I think there's a lot of potential. Yeah. I think, listen, 40% of those hair gummies, I think they're going bigger than that. Okay. I think. Okay. <laughs> okay. I am sure that there will be some sort of business manager. And yes, I think that this is about to become an empire. I think Terry is just beginning. What And what yeah. Marie France is sort of uh, starting before the pandemic hit with their school, I think Terry with her Team Two Breeds of Champions on Ice. Look, you've got Medvedeva, who's going out to be an Anna Karenina this summer for Averbuk. She gets a percentage of that. Right. You have uh, Zagitova, who's in a film for in Japan. But these are just the things that are happening that are just like, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is an empire. Think about so, and these and so these girls aren't necessarily with people like IMG. They are just with the coaching Either and the ring staff. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, because it was interesting. the The concept of all of this was new to me when we first heard about like um, Michelle and Frank sort of figuring out how they navigate. Because again, in my world, if the teacher gives you the technique, now you take the technique, and then if you're asked to do a show or something, then that's yours. But this is so much more tied in together. And where does it stop? When does it stop? All this sort of stuff. Because obviously, someone like Michelle would have agents outside of Frank, but she's really sort of streamlining the process. It's a Lori pipeline. It's a pipeline. Yeah. Back in the day, Frank, like Lori would get a cut of your earnings too, based on mm. what you would get. And I don't know how shows went versus uh, competition but for the high level skaters there were people making money and when there's money to be made people yeah. figure out how to get those contracts made yeah with high level choreographers so all interesting things happening you have to think like yeah. there are chess moves there's way more than just meets the eye and I'm curious to see what will and she didn't get to where she's at already by enjoying the status quo no or settling uh, with enough. Yeah, exactly. She'll always, she'll always strive for more. Think about it. These, they're about to become, I think, you know, the last Olympics she did so well with Medvedeva and Zagitova, but now the world knows that if you're looking for a top figure skater that you want to put in ads for the Olympics on a global scale, now you know, oh, you go to here. Like it yeah. used to be like, yeah, she has two girls and they're supposed to do so well. Now it's like, this is the place to go. Right. I imagine we will see them in lots of uh, pre-Olympic advertisements. Apparently Simone Biles is going to be in like more commercials than we can imagine. Okay. Coming to Tokyo. So uh, look, uh, that, that, is, that is long money. Okay. That is long, like. 
Well, and the difference being, like, like you're saying, they know with the Atari stamp of approval, like if they go for her girls, they're choosing the right people to promote. I will never forget like 2018 or whatever, when NBC and all the US outlets just plugged every wrong skater. Like, <laughs> It was so many people that didn't end up becoming stars that didn't go to the Olympics. I mean, it was like a lot of Paulina pictures and advertisements and like all these sorts of things. There was Ashley, who was in a lot. And you still have to look like, was it the right decision to send Ashley or not? Because you do want a personality, right? Now you want to put the person in the pre-Olympic ads who has a personality, who has the right look, who has the right charisma, who could potentially do well and then build off of it. So there's you know, the halo effect around the brand. And then also from a US figure skating that there's this person that they can put in shows that they can bring back and put on TV and talk. Hopefully they'll keep competing and then they will build, right? And build that following. And I think they haven't had that person. Yes, they've had champions. I don't know that Marilyn Charlie, I think that they did a good job where they went to Dancing with the Stars, but then there wasn't. There's any- inherent limitations for an ice dance team in the United States, particularly, oh, I think the touring situation wasn't big enough to really keep that momentum going, right? Or there were competitions. It was like, great, you won the Olympics, you won Dancing with the Stars. Yes, we're putting them in Japan and we're doing them here and we'll bring them back for nationals and put them, but there wasn't enough happening where like when Christy Yamaguchi won the gold, it just kept becoming bigger. And whether or not she was a pro or an amateur, it kept skating going, it kept the kids. And the whole thing is, is that you think we have to worry about is someone pointed out to me that the kids that are doing well now in skating, they entered skating around the time of the great recession in 2008. So we don't have like the depth, but maybe there were fewer skaters who were really signing up during mm. the time or that were investing in training at a more serious level. With COVID, obviously there weren't new blood coming in to learn to skate. So a lot of times high level coaches will teach learn to skate at the rink mm-hmm because they get a cheaper commission if they teach it. This is the business, how their skating works. So if you teach Learn to Skate and you're a high level coach, you get a cheaper rate for commission of what you have to pay to rank from your lesson. Okay. Also for an up and coming coach, you then, cause so like maybe someone like Frank has a contract where they don't have to pay commission because it's such a big deal that they teach at the Toyota Center because they're an Olympic coach. But this is for right. a few and far between. So for, uh, for someone like who's building their business, right? Think of like a Derek Delmore or Todd Eldridge or someone like, you know, who's building their crop of skaters. They will teach learn to skate because then it, what do you, let's say you have 12 kids and one takes a private lesson every six weeks of a seminar. You're building your student base and those are going to be the skaters that are going to go to take from taking one lesson to taking yeah. four lessons a week to taking eight le- right so you have to keep the pipeline i was always trained that work begets work so yeah. i mean yeah but that pipeline has really halted with the fact that there's been no learn to skate for 16 17 months so we really need the us to have a good showing at the olympics and to make a dent again like Adam and Mirai plus in a way of like a Tessa and Scott type thing to keep it going, right? Like right. you want to keep kids, to get kids to want to do learn to skate so that they want to take lessons and the parents want to get into it and invest and do it. I was looking at the gymnastics numbers and even with all the scandals they have because of the success, there are so many low level gymnasts in the US coming up. And at the level nine, level 10 levels. So we really need that pipeline in skating. And that's what is really missing. Cause I was looking at those videos I posted from 98 there. And those girls would have watched Christy. They would right. have watched Nancy and gotten more serious. There were just so many talents to pick from that it didn't matter which one right. came between the novice. You know, you had Naomi and Sasha and Sarah and Jenny and Elizabeth Kwan and this one and that one. And it didn't matter which one. It was just that there were so many to pick from. Right. So it didn't matter. It didn't matter that you won novice. It didn't mean success in the future. It just, you need people in the mix. So I think that that's the biggest thing, I think, in the U.S. and Canada that they could really do. I'd be curious how many people in Canada started CanSkate after 2018. Did their numbers go up? Because that should have really push things. And they had to thank you Canada tour and Stars on Ice and whatnot, so. 
And a team gold medal will do that. There's like a whole thing about it. And I mean, it's interesting, like we have people like Nathan and Jason, who I would think could very much inspire like young boys in particular, like, oh, I could do that. That looks fun, whatever. Um, but it does seem to be a, a more tricky thing to do in our ladies discipline right now about the kinds of engaging personalities that might become the darling of the Olympics of some sort. You know what I mean? This this media spotlight gravitating towards them. I don't I don't necessarily see that for so many people. Nathan's a great interview. Jason is lovely energy. Alexa is always great in an interview. But as far as like the ladies discipline talk need you know. catch. She needs a program with a costume and they need to finish really maybe a team event moment and maybe Hubble and Donahue can yeah. be a team event moment and they could like be fitness modeling or something. But those are the kinds of things that when you think about selling a sport and selling a product, you need them to do well. And then you need to put them in a venue like a show and hopefully right. like some professional competitions, even if they're in Russia or Japan, keeping them in the sport and going. You need these personalities right still out there and attracting people because every time skating is on TV in a way that seems interesting or fun or successful is the opportunity to get people into the rings. So right, right. Hopefully, you know, hopefully Nathan will have like such a moment and Jason could create such an artistic moment that that could really inspire people to want to move ahead. Because again, I think both of them are engaging when they speak also. And I think that's the that's a big a big part of the equation as well. I wonder will Nathan want to do both portions of the team event, or will he do the short and Jason do the free, or Jason do the short and Nathan do the free? To kind of uh... I know even as you mentioned both dance teams, I was like, I oh, gosh, I just feel like they always like to switch out the singles disciplines instead of the pairs or ice. Well, and Brandon should do both in the team event. I think that that is right. what should happen. And yeah. the ladies, we'll have to see. I, I, and which ladies are we sending? We need to send the right ladies with personality, but yeah. we can do well. Yeah, right. I know that they're going to have a skate Milwaukee for the junior uh, Grand Prix uh, contenders to really select who will go to the junior Grand Prix because they haven't had an opportunity to compete in the last years. So I think it's really smart that they're simulating competition and getting uh, the skaters back out there. What are they going to do for Nebelhorn? Are they going to decide it off of Champs Camp or are they going to have one of these competitions? Because I want to see Mariah against Amber against... Uh... In a competition setting, because I don't know how Champs Camp works, but it always seems like weird things happen there and people don't really listen and people sometimes perform well and don't perform well. And sometimes it's a total indicator as to how they're doing and sometimes it's not at all. So I would think a competitive scene, because again, I don't think it's, a, it's about even assessing material or talent. I think for much of the US ladies in particular, it's about competitive nerve. So yeah. I think that would be a venue in which to test that, not in a workshop kind of environment. And also, I don't know that the girl who goes to Nebelhorn to get the spot for the US, that that begets them a spot in the Olympic. I don't think it should at all, because think about how much time is in between those two events. It's going to have to be, again, I think of Alyssa Liu, how much she turned things around by nationals. It can go that much up or down either way in such a short period of time. And she's but, in Colorado yeah. again. So I know that they've had problems with ice time in California, that it's been really challenging uh, with COVID and everything like that. So. And then they have hockey tryouts in a lot of areas too. And hockey really keeps rinks alive during right. COVID because, so you have to think about like, how is she doing? I heard, you know, they've been managing a hip injury for Alyssa and working through it. And I mean, it's better to work through it now and not push it. And then, yeah. Put it there. And I think that her coaches, you know, Massimo and Jeremy are smart in that respect to not push something and let us me heal. I know yeah. and Mariah are in the show in, uh, Aston, Pennsylvania at Iceworks. Uh, I don't know if it's at Ice, yeah, at Iceworks. You know, Gracie did two triple X's in the show. I'm wondering how that is. She's performing several times this weekend. So I don't know, I don't, it's a long shot of long shots, but. Yeah, I, like, like I, okay. <laughs> I'm not saying it's happening, but I'm saying she's in 
on the out, she's on the outside of the conversation. And for the US to have a strong Olympic team, we need a really happening conversation. We yeah. need a conversation that's like, that's great that Brady and Karen did well at Worlds and let's see how they're gonna do at Nationals. Right. And let's see how they're gonna do in the Grand Prix. And let's really encourage the competition and not say that any spots are guaranteed. Right, I don't think any are. I don't think one is, not like, one. As soon as Karen did well, everyone was ready to send her. It's, it's too far in advance in the same way when she was fourth in 2017, like she just kind of barely made that team because the US was trying to send Ashley, uh, Ashley a message um, that much later. But I mean, so much can happen in between those two times. We Another have, one can emerge. Yeah. yeah. Amber Glenn, Mariah. But we did see Karen again. And unfortunately, it didn't really back up the world's performance. It made it huh? more, more plausible that she guaranteed herself nothing. It, it's going to be a fresh competition when it comes and to I know it. that Star Andrews did a competition this weekend and got like a 64-ish. She did a, a clean triple triple and she, I think she did a triple flip. So she's another one on the outskirts, but I think you just need to keep, we need to re keep encouraging the depth and encouraging the competition to make those Olympic trials super, super competitive to push right. the results to the Olympics. And right. I think that by saying that, oh, someone's a guarantee, I, I don't think- Because I don't think it's true. I Everyone's think body of work is so varied. Well, we missed a whole season, right? And if you want to say that Mariah Bell was the best at Skate America, but then she was not good at nationals and then didn't go to Worlds, you know, what are we basing it off of? Things change so quickly, so. Right, I don't yeah. Know. I, I think the body of work may very much mean next season as it starts. Like it, it will be fascinating. I think there will be a real art to seeing who is sent to what Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and in the men for the US, this is interesting because obviously everyone's talking about Vincent Zo, who you know didn't make the free skit at Worlds and you know had an injury. We have um, Yarrow, who may get citizenship, but doesn't, and he had a great nationals, but doesn't have a career filled with consistency. This is why we need right. that event before. Never right. And what about Torgashev? Because we haven't seen him and he's been with Raphael. Are we gonna see a difference in competition with him? Now that he, you know, Raphael's the first one to say, I need two years with a skater and uh, I, I, I'm, Fair bracing enough. Myself, I'm bracing myself for the Raphael speed, but, if he's been there for eight, nine months, training with Nathan Chen and Mariah, I'm expecting maybe not a change in technique, but a change in attitude and seriousness. And yeah, because a lot of it wasn't necessarily a technical limitation, was it? It did seem to be like a lack of organized sort of thought and strategy going into certain events. Because he's always had such beautiful moments. Mm -hmm. It just seems like you never knew what to expect. Again, I think the answer is just compete as much as humanly possible. I think Raphael might want three Olympians. I think Raphael might go for that and yeah. push that. So look, it's easier once you have the one Olympian to get the second. Once you have the second, you get the third, right? I think for Raphael, because you have the environment in the rink. Right. And it inspires everyone. So right. I am, I was just reading a book about sports psychology and it was talking about it's based on triathletes, but it was just saying that to train with people who are a little bit better than you, but that you, you, you want to set goals that are 70 to 80% of likely to something that you could achieve so that it's not something that will be so right ahead of you that you can never reach it. But, and it, and it works with people that you train with too. So training with Nathan might not be as inspiring for someone like Torgashev, not that it's not inspiring, but if you know that you can never be at Nathan's level, that might not it's Most, easier to disconnect from the whole thing, yeah. But if he could watch someone like Mariah Bell, who had a rough season, come and nail it and get that Nebelhorn spot, that might then motivate someone like Torgashev to motivate and do well. It was just an interesting concept and it's just a theory. So yeah, I, I, yeah, it, it, it talked a lot about like people that you train with, how competitive, like at what levels it's really beneficial. And then at what levels you know, it's, it's not, but it was, it was all about self-esteem and self-efficacy. Well, but that's a thing. <laughs> I mean, that's a huge part of it. I mean, and that's probably like, I, I'm intrigued where someone like Vincent's headspace is right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think he could be really shaken from that, even if he doesn't 
say that he is, you know? I mean, there's there's a lot for him to prove this coming season. Yeah, So sure. Yeah. But I don't think it's over for him because- No. Mm -mm. Listen, he's still a huge talent in the US and- Yeah, it's just not the lock I think it was going into Worlds. I think going into Worlds, I think it seemed clear that most, most probably, that that world team was going to then be the Olympic team. But now it has raised some questions. There's yeah. an opportunity here, should someone like Torgashev choose to take it. Yeah, and we haven't seen Camden step it up. That's always something that we think we've been waiting to happen, uh, but- But nothing about his situation has changed either. Like that's why the Torgashev thing could be a little intriguing because he's changed, he's changed some things and now let's see what happens. It's like um, giving us another reason to take a look at him. But how much did you improve vocally? You know you, how you talked about how you weren't working that hard when you didn't have any gigs on the calendar. And then mm. once you had gigs on the calendar, it motivated you to get into gigs. Right. I think with the Olympics looming, like, you know how we saw Gracie do not much the last couple of years. And then now that the Olympics are a year away, all of a sudden she's doing triple lutzes and shows and mm. working really hard. But do you think that's what's motivating Gracie? Or I, I'm always yeah. convinced that something with Gracie though is also about like, finding the right headspace in general with her relationship I think with Trent. Yeah, yeah. But some, I think there is an element of do or die that gets someone up that's like, you know what, let me commit and see what I can do. Because okay. she knows how talented she is. Yeah, hands down the most talented still, in my opinion, of all of those ladies. Like the but natural like spring. Camp is really talented too. Yeah. All it takes is that one skater who has the talent to wake up and be like, I am gonna do this the way that Amber Glenn did during quarantine. We saw it in uh, gymnastics with Jordan Childs who did nothing for the last two and a half years and then woke up because you know the Olympics were postponed and she's like, I'm gonna defer a year. I'm training with Simone and I'm gonna put everything I have into it. And now she's like, people are talking about her like almost a lock to make the Olympic team because she's looking so good. And she went from being someone that was just going to finish 10th or 12th but right. she had that physical talent. I think it shows how much of this is up do you, here. So do you think it's like an, I will do this? Or do you yes. think it's maybe the realization that they could do it? Like for someone like oh. Camden, oh. I, I was like, is part of this that you don't actually believe you're in the running? Because yes. you are, you're yes. so close. And it seems like some of these skaters are resigned to thinking they're in that B group. And you're like, you're actually right there if you chose to believe it. I do think that there's a lot. I think that in the US and the men, we've had a system where we've had tears. And I think that this hurt, in the ladies, we had the situation when we had Michelle, Sarah, and Sasha. I think people like Jenny and Angela and ones beneath that and Patrice, I think they lost motivation because it felt like there was a stranglehold on the top right. spots, right? right? Especially during the important year of like the Olympics and the post-Olympic year when worlds were in the US. I think the fact that you didn't see movement between those three skaters, even though they deserve to go, I think mm -hmm. the skaters beneath start to feel- Resigned. Never gonna be my time. Yeah. I'm just, you know, I should look to something else. I think in the US, we've had a situation where the top three men have been Nathan, Vincent, and Jason. By their own ability, it's been right. show for the last several seasons. I think that with the Tortoiseves and the- uh, Camdens. The and, yeah. and the Camdens and the- you, Tomoki, I think you start to think of yourself as in like that next crop and well, it doesn't really matter how I skate, I'm not gonna go. Right. And then you see Vincent not make the free skate at Worlds. And then you start to think, wait a second. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. Wait a second. Right. Right. And I think for a lot of people, I think for the, the I think for someone like a Gracie Gold or, Amber or whoever, or Mariah, but you're like, wait a second, maybe that window was closing and then we got a third spot potentially. And you start thinking like, I need to wake up. I need to get in this. There's a third spot and it's one year away. And the perfect example are all those Atiri girls. You could have said it was a Trusiva, Kosternaya, Sherbakova lock. No one is getting in. Valieva didn't hear that. Usachova doesn't think that. My Krovich, bless her heart, in those two quads. She still thinks she's got a shot at it somewhere. Do you know what I mean? There's never that resigning to just be in the outer group. Mm -hmm. and, and it works, you know? It, what what if Valieva had that idea? Like, well, they're kind of the three. I guess I'll just wait. 
all it, well, how about Tukdemisheva? If she were to sit back and say, oh my God, Tukdemisheva, Trusova, and Sherpa Kova are gonna sweep the 2020 worlds. All of a sudden you have COVID. All of a sudden two of those three girls leave Viteri and go to Plashenko. All of a sudden Costa Naya has an injury and loses motivation and shows up not looking good. And Tukdemisheva sails through that door and gets, a world silver a medal? silver medal. I mean, again, it's the story that anything is indeed possible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I think it's very possible that Terry will get all three spots for the Olympics, but they still have to deal with Duke Dimitriva, who's now a world silver medalist. So, right. interesting. I was looking at the spots because there's a lot of talk about the Grand Prix assignments, which we don't know the definitive rules and how they're typically going to assign the Grand Prix spots because we missed a year and there was only one international competition that added to the world rankings. So they are very skewed. And I, I just wrote down what the standings are for each of the top Russian skaters. So you just get an idea because usually the top 24-ish are the ones that are guaranteed the Grand Prix spots and the top, uh, the top three get to select where they wanna go. So I just wrote down Rika Kihira is the number one skater in the world, believe it or not, who also has a major back injury. Because remember, she has the 2018-2019 season where she won everything until she bombed Worlds. Right. So she still has that going for her. With Sherbakova was at the junior level, you don't get as many points. Right. As with Trusova, right? So Anna Sherbakova is the second ranked skater in the world. Tuk Dimitriva is the number three. Trusova is number four. Kostrnaya is number eight. Mm. Agitava is number nine. Now, obviously she's going to not do the Grand Prix this season most likely. So I think that that moves everyone up and there's right. some niggling that happens. Samadurova is number 11. Because remember, she has that European champ, European champ. Right. Right. And then we don't have another world in 2020. So everything is skewed. Medvedeva is number 13. Is she going to compete? And will Russia say to the ISU, listen, don't Because worry. also just a little, just to insert this, when they announced those team things, she, where she was not on that list, she made a big point to say, just because she's not on the list doesn't mean she's not training. Right. Yeah. And she's also doing an Averbuch show this summer where she's like spending time working on pair elements instead of working on triple triples. So you tell me, right. is she preparing for the Grand Prix or is she preparing for a great professional career? Right. There is a theory that she could be keeping the door open because she doesn't know whether or not the ISU will indeed rage the age, which they've been talking mm. about so much. And uh, some countries voted against it before and maybe it was closer to being moved to 18 than we even know. If it does, that would change everything, right? Maybe right. she would be back. Maybe she could do her 2016 content and get back into form. Yeah. And, and this this sort of um, pair of stuff that we were watching with her with Ember. Mm -hmm. First of all, do we know what happened to Zabiaco? I don't remember why they retired. I, uh, okay. But this is just for these shows. Like, it wasn't like she was going to try to do honest, something. They were doing the most basic pair position. Obviously, her I know. already paid to be pairs for the next Olympics. But, okay. <laughs> but listen, okay. she's going to okay. be the star of a production. And that Terry Jenner, to believe that will get a wonderful percentage. <laughs> I think we should support it. Okay. okay. The okay. Of and Abba, you get on those professional shows listen and you invite ashley wagner to wear the booty shorts and the pink top and do the hand clap song okay right the yeah. USFS should make up with ashley and invite her to perform at skate america in vegas because we need yeah. someone to get the crowd get the crowd up, up. yeah Come on. energy yeah exhibition maybe before the main event get the isu on board. i'd rather hear from ashley than rusty at those yes events. yes yeah. <laughs> Booty shorts and the top, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Joe Amazing. Pony in Vegas. Okay. <laughs> hashtag make it happen. Okay, hashtag okay. Wagner, hashtag US figure skating, hashtag hand clap, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Amazing, okay. okay. Uh, come on, like what is she, is she doing? I don't know, what, what's happening? Yeah. Don't love her, make yeah. up, okay? For real, they don't have the luxury to not include her. Exactly. Yeah. Constantinova, 29. Now, is she, like, 
technically she's around, but is is she gonna like move up and move into the guaranteed double spots? Because Valjeva is number forty one because she's still a junior. Exactly. That is obviously there will be finagling. This is why I don't think that the rules work for this year. Usashova right. forty nine. Senya Sinitsyn at 54, Gulyakova 61, Darkanova 65, Chromich 67. So Chromich might be ahead in the funding at Kostrnaya, but Kostrnaya is number eight in the world and Chromich is 67. So right. when the Grand Prix assignments come out, I do believe that there will be some, some shuffling. Yeah. And the last, so with the last real Grand Prix season, when it was 2019, 2020, Russia had three ladies in every event. So they could potentially have eight skaters with two assignments and then maybe like two skaters with one assignment. So, mm. and I just wrote down the US ladies to put it in perspective. Brady is number five, Mariah 16, Karen Chen 17, Star Andrews is 22, really? Amber is 30, Alyssa is 45, Ting 55, Gabby Izzo 60, Hannah Harrell 76, Megan Westenberg 81. So there's just a lot of things that could change. Yeah, fascinating. And where do, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot. Do we know where like the other Japanese ladies kind of fit in there? I know Rika's yeah. first. Yeah, I'll because, because like for instance, Miyahara may be inexplicably high, of course, well, even course though she's- she competes all the time for the last three years. Exactly. Even without great results at Worlds. Okay. Because I think it will be important for them also to sort of be testing Wakaba in this in this uh, Grand Prix series. All right, let me read the men and then I'll read the ladies because it's just like, okay. Nathan okay. Chen is number one, Yuzu mm -hmm. number two, Shoma Uno number three, Jason Brown number four. Interesting. Samarin is number five, <laughs> Aliyev is number six, Mateo Rizzo is seven, Keegan Messing eight, Junwa Cha is nine, Marisi Kavidishvili is 10th, Yuma Kagiyama <laughs> 11th, Kevin Amos is 12th, Daniel Grossel is 13th. Jinbo Yang is 14th. This is why I think having three seasons is a little bit too long. And skating- It's too long, season. yeah. It, it can be the end of a generation. You think about these Boyang, and then of course, because Koyoda was not competing, his name is nowhere up in there, like, hmm. Yeah, because he missed 2018, 2019 with 70%, and then there was only Worlds this year to right. put it there, and he missed last season so right he missed 2018 2019 he would have been in the season 2019 2020 he would have missed so Koyada is 16th and the point of these world rankings is one a lot of skate order right once you get to the competitions but then like you're saying also the grand prix assignments who gets to pick what and uh camden is 19th keji is number 20 tomoki is 23 vincent 25 uh, oh well because yes he was missing that whole season of course Golulev is number 38, and like, where is he? We haven't seen him at all. What's going on there? So, yeah. Uh, okay, let me get, just go on to the ladies. This is, there are like so many skaters. Okay. All right. So the ladies, it goes Rika, number one, Anna Sherbakova, number two, Chukdamisheva, three, uh, Trusova, four, Brady, five, Kaori Sakamoto, six, Satoko Miyahara, seven, Kostranaya eight, Zagitova nine, and Su Lim is number 10. Really? Sofia Samadurva is 11. Uh, Young Yu is 12, Medvedeva 13, Ryabava 14th, Yilim Kim 15th, Mariah Bell 16th, Karen Chen 17th, Alexia Paganini 18th, Wakaba 19th. And then Eva Lata Kibis from Estonia is number 20, Hyan Lee 21, Star Andrews 22, Terzin Baeva 23rd. Nicole Schott, 24th, Lona Hendricks, 25th, Yuara Yokoi, 26th. So it's just interesting how it, you know, there are people that are, will be obviously taken out of right. that. Because um, have we heard anything from Terza uh, no, Not really. Not since we heard her out of tune playing the, uh, <laughs> the, the violin. It was cold in that rink. We cannot shade her, okay? It was cold, how dare we? That's the instrument, not the hand position that would affect, be affected from the rink, just saying, but okay. Who's, who's ranked number one in Paris, Jonathan? Tell me please. Well, I'm like, would it be? No, it would still be, well, Sui and Han haven't competed. Oh no, is it KMT or something? Oh. No. Hung and Jin. Oh, that does make sense. 
That does make sense. Because like, again, we so very rarely see Sui and Han. What Kova is number two. Okay. Nikita Dalyamov, number three. Tarasov Morozov, number four. KMT and Michael Marinaro are number five. Sui and Han, because they never compete, are number six. Ashley Kane and Tim LeDuc are number seven. Paul Interesting. Paul and Koydikin are number eight. Ziegler and Kifa are number nine. Della Monica and Guaris are number 10. Um, Minerva, Fabian, Haas, and oh, yeah. Siegert are number 11. Kane and O'Shea are number 12. Uh, Rebecca Gilardi and Filippo Ambrosini are number 13. Uh, I like barely remember who Yilova they are. and Relov are number 14. Mm. Jessica and Brian are number 15. Vanessa James and Morgan Sippers are number 16. Evelyn and Trent are 17. So, yeah, and obviously, you know, Alexa and Brandon are number 34. Maybe they would get one spot, but then USA would invite them to skate America. So that's how they'll right. get the second one. Well, because then also like, There's wasn't that. there something where they were taking former partners points or something yeah. like that? Okay. Not, I don't know that they're doing that anymore. So, okay. and then you could look at it this way that- uh, And Skate America didn't count for anything, right? Because it wasn't technically open. Yeah. And another thing, even in the dance, Papadakis and Cicero are only number seven because remember they missed events because of a concussion. Right. And uh, then they missed Worlds this year. So it's an Vicky and Nikki. So it's in Casalaba. Who are number two? Gillis and Poirier are number three. Guinard and Fabri are fourth. Chalk and Babies are fifth. Stepanova and Bukin are sixth. Papadakis is on seventh. Fear and Gibson are eighth. Because again, Chalk and Bates also missed a big chunk of that season. So yeah. interesting that the Italians are ahead of them. Yeah, but I don't know. It, I'm so excited for like the season and the competition. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because you're really gonna see like what federations have real talent and skill at how to navigate these waters. Cause there's waters to navigate in the assignments, in the pre-competitions, how you're setting everybody up. It will be interesting to see how each country plays this. Oh yeah. I'm yeah, great. I know, I know. <laughs> now, did you see it's confirmed that Megan Duhamel and Dylan Moscovich will be doing? I know, and it's so funny because one of the pictures that was posted, like it tried to make them look side by side, like they were doing backwards crossovers, holding hands, <laughs> like through a weird edit. It was pretty funny. It was pretty funny. But I so, mean, also, Jonathan, there's like a woman that always like tweets at you. I feel like in my mind, she's your Twitter friend. I think she's a little bit hippie-ish. I don't. You know that Wahin traveler that always will like- Oh yeah, I don't know who that is. Right. But here's, here's why you don't tag skaters and when things get like really uncomfortable and like, I, I don't know how to respond. When like, we're talking about skating parents, which is like a conversation that's like very much on the edge of like, you know, what we should be discussing and what, you know, right? We're talking that was just a Mother's Day tie-in by the way. Right, okay. like a fun, <laughs> people yeah. like, uh, this one and that one. And I replied, I'm like, yeah. and then. Days later, he goes, well, I would like to have Mrs. Bayul because her death was the subject of every skating fluff. But she tagged Oksana, isn't that the thing? And then Oksana yeah. replies, my mother's not a skating mother, but I am. And I was like, and then she made a post about it on Instagram and I'm just like, I'm like, oh my God. Oh. Well, and that's what a lot of people don't understand when they think that like we oh. talk this smack like, one is not seeking out that skater and tagging them in the post ever. Also, like, ever. What are you talking about someone's dead parent for? And then, right, like, right. what? We don't know anything yeah. about Marina Bayul. Right. What? Right. Yeah. <laughs> when I saw that. But we do know Oksana is a skating mom now. She is, and good for her. Okay. And it's cute to see her with her daughter on the ice. Yeah. But, but yes, I just did a response. I was confused. Though. And to tag Oksana of all people who loves a to get in the ocean press. Loves to stir some stuff up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it did seem clear, like that most people realized we missed Suzanne Bonally. That was the real takeaway from all the Twitter responses. Among many others. Of course, uh, literally, there's almost one behind. Man, I missed Yana and Joyce. Okay. <laughs> oh, I missed them. Okay. Amazing, uh, amazing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. 
What else did Ice Cream Stand that they uh, supported Nicole's skating career from the Chicago Zoo, and then they met Steinbrenner and the whole thing. Yes. And the rest is history. Voila. Yes. Oh man. Um, so yeah, this Megan and Dylan are skating together in uh, Stars on Ice, Canada. Interesting, because he's best friends with Eric. <laughs> well, that's what I was thinking about this whole time, like uh, that he was doing the interview with um, Eric and Vanessa, the whole time knowing they he was probably- competitive, these teams. But of course, remember, they just let the girls be competitive and the guys were able to be friends still. Right, supposedly. Yeah, but I mean, it was interesting that of course, at that time, he already knew- Called Canadian Night and game. Opportunism. So now they yeah. will be skating together. And you know what? Good for them. Good for them. Yeah. Was Tessa and Scott are not in this Stars and Ice tour. So we have Kirk Browning, Alyssa Sisney, Caitlin Osman. Elvis Stoiko is still selling the tickets in Canada. Bless, yeah. Weaver and Poge and Jeff Buttle. I think we need some more stars added to that cast. Yeah. We need Ashley doing the, the booty clap, right with the short. <laughs> Come on. Although I'm glad to hear Caitlin's doing it. I didn't know what. What, I mean, I like her, but what does she do? I don't know her pro numbers. I know Ashley. Yeah, I don't know what she'd be like on that kind of tour. Actually. I know what Ashley would be like. She'd be skating something dramatic. Yeah. Like, they're Easy. all- uh, Yeah, yeah. Bring out the same, you know, the, the fifth year of Moulin Rouge and hip hip. <laughs> Wouldn't you want to see it, okay? Yeah, I think it's a, it's exactly the right venue it's for it. It's from this team photo and you know it, okay? Yeah, I know. <laughs> What about Adam Rapon? Pay him the big money to go there. Let Although I wonder there. now that he's done so much crossover fame, if he's interested in doing that kind of tour. Excuse me, what is he really doing right now? I is know, but maybe he's thing? getting ready for an Olympic season he's in his own way. Tour. Yeah. He does have some big projects going on, but like, I think he could maybe do shows for six times. He's not above it. It's can they afford him is the... Mm. And, and again, how much has he been skating? Canada versus the US, but oh, please, he's talented. He could put together, a, yeah. he's entertaining. You want people that the audience wants to see, right? Right, so, that they engage with, yeah, 100%. And I would think actually now that he's been doing so much kind of performing off the ice, I think that would only enhance what he does on the ice. You know what I mean? Make him that much more comfortable, make him that much more performative and projective. I want to see him, come yeah. on. Let them do it, all right? Yeah, yeah. They have to pick pro skaters because of the time of year it is. Right, right. Unless this gets canceled because of COVID. Because remember, people in Canada that are getting the first dose now, unless things change and we like- Several months later, are they getting their second? Yeah. For August for their second vaccine. So yeah. It takes several months, so who knows? Yeah. Hopefully it happens. I think we need stuff. I think we need stuff to happen. The world needs- yeah. Well, the momentum needs to start now. Yeah. Oh my God. I mean, I was watching TV last weekend. Um, what's that open house was on NYC? Love it. Okay. Look, it's okay. the weirdest show. You ever like tired on a Sunday? The best show to watch is open house NYC. I don't know. Look at those rich people's homes and like. Okay. <laughs> it's just like, I don't, I don't know. There's something. Does anyone else have this where it's a calming? I just like enjoy to watch these rich people real estate. They're not selling okay. them. They're, are they selling them? I don't know what's happening. But. They're just sharing them with you. Yeah, okay. And a commercial came on TV for a concert on December 17th at Madison Square Garden. And Jonathan, we need to go. We need to go. All on me. Like it was <laughs> Greta Bocelli and Matteo singing together. Come on, we can have an Alexa and Brandon moment. And I feel like you hate Andrea Bocelli. And you I do. <laughs> you know what? We need to go and you can be bitter the whole time. Blah, 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 blah. Broadway Queen and they are commercial. Broadway <laughs> Queen is commercial and he would love to go, okay? He oh my would God. I get the idea that I would be attending an Andrea Bocelli concert oh, because is you're like- so above it. I would be going to an opera concert that no one would ever even know who I'm seeing. Oh my God. Except everyone in opera. It's, it, well, the problem comes, Dave, is it would, be like going, it would be like going to a psychology seminar held by Dr. Phil. And then like asking a psychologist. Oh my God. Him. I would love to see Dr. Phil and <laughs> laugh as they're walking in hand in hand. 
<laughs> oh my god! Grandpa used to say Baldy was flapping his gums again. That's what he used to say about. <laughs> Yeah, Andrea Bocelli is like the Dr. Laura, Dr. Phil of my art form. Whatever, okay. Every but art form has them, every every art form has there them. There has not been a live performance. If you wouldn't want to see him and the cute son singing together like this, <laughs> come on, Jonathan. You're dating a Broadway queen now. All of right, that, yeah. like, <laughs> they love everyone in Broadway. How, if, if a Broadway person sees a show, how do they say it is? Amazing, amazing. Oh, do they? See, they I think when you're so in the industry, you, you have more pointed no, opinions. They are the phoniest people on Facebook, <laughs> any of them, okay? Okay, they okay. They make the art form. They love everyone. It's like, oh my God. You know, when they said Bette Midler does Hello Dolly and then they'll go see Bernadette and they'll be like, it was just as good, if not better, amazing. And then Betty Buckley. But who are, you who are you saying? People that just like musical theater? Or you mean people oh, in the in art it. form? They're in it. The Broadway oh. gays are so fake and phony. Okay. Rare, if you, you meet one that will tell you the truth, that is the, that is the gem that you go for, right? Okay, fascinating. <laughs> Even if they don't agree with you and they just have an opinion, I'm like, yes. Anyone that's- Well, I think at some point, like same thing with opera also, like at the, at some point it's just like, just go see whatever. I won't even get in the way. Like if you want to go see an opera and I don't think it's a good opera, like I'm just glad you're going to see any opera. So just like have at it, enjoy. I hope you love it. I hope you keep going. Like- I think that Bocelli is the one who Galina and Yelena Tchaikovsky would like go to see and Italy, France together. So I think I think we need to go. I think we need I to mean, go. you know he's never been in an opera. Obviously, there are limitations because he is blind, so he can't be in an opera traditionally. He just does these like kind of concerts, which is also not opera. It's like excuse me, I would like to see Yanni as well. There you go. He's like a Yanni. Yeah. It would be like taking Lang Lang to go see Yanni. <laughs> I would like to go see Yanni. Okay. Or John Tesh, you could talk about gymnastics backstage. I mean, which one did the concert at the Red Rocks? Was it John Tesh or Yanni? I mean, both. I think that was John Tesh. Yanni was live at the Acropolis. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, with the hair, it, with um, like, um, is his name Roy Burkhardt? Who's Keegan's coach? It's like, he's got that Burkhardt hair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Yeah. We're watching an event last night. He coached someone else. I think he coached JJ Matthews. Can anyone confirm this? Was JJ Matthews coached by Keegan's coach? Do we know this? Because and did Rory work with him when she was like doing all those pro competitions? I'm sure. He learned that split jump from someone. Right. And she worked with John Nix. So. Mm -hmm. And she said she's related to Roberta Flack. I was slightly skeptical about the way it was presented, but I love Roberta Flack, the singer. It could be she's uh, Rory Flack Burkhardt. They could. Listen, there are- That would make me like Rory even more. It would make me like her even more. Isn't there a Bayer Gillis or something, some like performer? Yeah. 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 Maybe on your ancestry, you connect and you don't even know. I mean, I've done 23 and Me. It didn't bring up any skating commentary. There was no skating section. Yeah, well, one of the judges, right? Back like in the John Curry days or something. Come on. All right, so speaking of music selections and music. Brady is skating to an Audi, Brady to know. Mm -hmm. Nouveau Blanche or whoever this piece is called. I think it's generically lovely. In a, in a current day Yanni sort of way. He's becoming a Yanni. Yeah. Here's the thing about Benoit. I know that these are not the most inspiring skaters he's working with. But he also gave someone else experience by Yanni in the same week. And it's like, you have to diversify a little bit, Benoit, to give everyone a Yanni. What are we just like putting the CD on? Like, oh. You get track one, you're going to do track eight. <laughs> this is the IJS. Listen, you have to find music that can withstand an IJS spin and right. forward sequence and smoke break in the middle of the program. It's just very strange. You have to find music that's just kind of there and kind of ambient it's a bit more ambient and it's kind of broad enough that you can interpret enough within it i guess it leaves enough open how do we feel i don't know it's it, it does speak to something with this ijs that needs to be tweaked with some more choreographic elements so that we can just make them more interesting and less 
and mm -hmm. allow them not to sound all dick button about it, but allow those spins to match the music instead of having to ignore the music for this part because we're all about to do the same spin. Mm -hmm. So. Also to make fun of the Russian press once more. They announced that Sinitsa and Katsalapov are gonna to skate to Rachmaninoff, but they didn't say which piece. Just the entire collected works. <laughs> something by Rachmaninoff, which is a great, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they never published that interview that I gave because I think I it was clear also like- You didn't give enough scandal. I didn't give enough scandal. And also it's so clear that they don't often know what they're talking about. I was like, well, no, that person didn't choreograph that. This person choreographed that. And they were like, oh. And I was like, and that's my point. And they were like, oh. They also, I was like, on an article, they took a comment someone made and almost attributed it to her. And that was like, and someone else that was at the seminar left a comment that was kind of critical. And apparently Danny G was very upset about the article. He had called someone and was like, well, we haven't given a seminar in four years. It was like, wait a second, Danny G, no one knew who you were four years ago. So right, exactly. you were before the 2018 Olympics. Right. Calm yourself down with that ego. Like, yeah. you've done a yeah, lot. It's very, it's very self-aggrandizing. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. Things change and you've done a lot in the last several years, but four years ago, we were just meeting you. So right. Me we just came up with Danny G at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Strange. Such Russian drama. Such needless <laughs> things. I mean. Even when there isn't one, there is one. <laughs> yeah. Please. Meanwhile, they, there was a, a reporter who tagged herself <laughs> with Danny G that was like looking friendly with him. <laughs> like, I'm, you know, I just think that these reporters in Russia, maybe they don't have the same <laughs> standards. Perhaps, perhaps not. Or, and make certain stories that where there are none. Yeah. Listen, they so. need the clicks going in sports, are you? They have things to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They'll have more articles about, why is it not working for Plushenko? Now they're all deep diving into this. It was a podcast this week. Oh my God. On there. Anyway, I'm just gonna decide for the Olympics. We know that Chelsea Memel is gonna compete in a week. She is like almost our age, Jonathan, so we need to support her competing at Okay, she's the Zoe Jones. So. <laughs> yes. Okay. How about Tom Daly and his partner? Are they not the hottest British people you've ever seen in your life? You know, that's not really my aesthetic, but I know that it is yours. How is it not your aesthetic, Jonathan? Come on. Like, I'm like a six foot five hairy guy. Like, are like not your aesthetic, like, you know. No, I'd rather have a guy with a tummy half the time. <laughs> it's a okay. thing, it's a choice, it's a choice, yeah. Hey, Loss. Holden Edge looks sexy everywhere. 